recording, right? <laughs> it's like you're making <laughs> Yeah, I'll right. be quiet. I thought so. So, lagging and leading relates to the relationship between the current and the voltage in the circuit, right? Again, I go back to this diagram that I've re-mentioned a couple of times. Think about an inductor. You saw this diagram in the book that shows the vectors. In the case of the inductor where the impedance is J omega L, what this tells us, right, is that V equals IZ. Well, I has a J on, or sorry, the Z has a J on it. So if this is my I, I have to add 90 degrees to that to get the phase of my voltage. So my voltage leads my current by 90 degrees. Or I can say the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. So there's not just one way of describing it. But depending on which one you're talking about as sort of your reference, the other one is either lagging or leading, right? So it depends on how they phrase it. Like if you're working on a homework problem and they say, you know, does current one lag or lead current two? Well, look at current two as your reference and say, well, how does current one relate to that? Or how does the voltage relate to that, right? So if they say, does the voltage lag or lead the current? You would say the voltage leads the current by 90 degrees in this case. Right. And then again, because the capacitor, right, because it's the, the, the impedance of the capacitor has the minus J, it reverses that relationship. Again, because if I were to take this and put it into Ohm's law, where the voltage is the impedance times the current, I'm saying, okay, my current is sort of my reference. I'm multiplying it by Z, which gives me a negative J, which is a minus 90 degree phase shift. So the voltage is 90 degrees lagging relative to the current. So it really is it's just that, that way to tell you which one's ahead of the other. Leads I or B flags I. Okay. Good?